If you've got the latest version of Microsoft Excel, one of the cool new functions you'll have available is pivot by. And what that does is it allows you to create sort of a pivot table on the fly through just a simple formula. And in this example, I'm going to show you how that compares against a normal pivot table and whether you should consider using pivot by instead. So here I've got a table of values. We've got name, department, store. So I'm going to use the pivot by function here, pivot by, and it's going to ask me to specify the row that I want to use. So I'm just going to use the, the name for the column fields. I'm going to set up uh, select the department. For the values, I've got my dollar amounts here. And then for the type of function that I want to use, so I'm going to use just a summation of everything, but obviously there's all a lot of different options you can use. So not unlike how when you create a, uh, a pivot table normally, you'd have to specify your rows, your columns, your values, that sort of thing. And now if we close this, you know, we've got a nice summary of, of these values based on, you know, we've got our names, we've got our departments going across. So a really easy way to summarize the, the data now. Now we can also format this to apply formatting however we want to. Now, if I were to go through and create a normal pivot table, uh, just going through the insert method. So what I'd want to do is select my, my cells here, go to insert, select a pivot table, and then I'm going to select existing worksheets. Just want to put it directly below here and hit okay. And now again, we'll put the names in the row section, the department in the columns and the dollar amount in the value. So not unlike what I did, in the earlier step. Now to format these 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 values, I can also do the same thing and just go in here and, and modify them. So the process is fairly similar in that sense. We're still following the same sort of uh, procedure as in we have to set what we want in our columns and our row sections. Now, this is uh, the pivot by function is a good way if you just wanna quickly summarize your values and that's it. You don't wanna do anything beyond that. For example, I can't click in here it's not going to do anything. I can't drill down. And that I think is the biggest disadvantage, obviously, of, of just using a formula is you lose that capability. Because one of the best things about a pivot table is, you know, you look at the value and you say, okay, what, what makes up that value? You know, if I double click on it, I can see these are all, all the transactions, all the details. When I'm done with them, I can delete it and go back to my, my pivot table. So there's going to be obviously a lot more versatility and adaptability you can use custom um, calculated fields all those sorts of things in a normal pivot table so the pivot by function is going to be fairly limited in terms of what you may want to use it for like i said if you just really just want a quick summary and you don't want to create a whole new pivot table you know the pivot by function gives you that flexibility but i wouldn't suggest just you know, foregoing a, a pivot table if you, you need that capability to drill down. If you want to create a, a more complex layering system than just having, um, you know, one field going over here, one field going going over here, um, and and being able to to drill down. In that case, you're still better off with the normal pivot table, just because with pivot by you're going to be a bit more limited in its capabilities. I mean, it does a good job of summarizing, but that's that's the main. Uh, thing you'd want to use it for. P uh, pivot tables still have a lot of usefulness in, in, in creating them and setting them up just because you're going to get a, a lot more usefulness than if you were to just to use the pivot by function.